two-year-old wanted to try it on. It's a little big for you. It's a little big for you. You still admiring yourself in the mirror? <laughs> oh, I'd have to make a smaller one for you. everyone and welcome to Cinemum. Today we're going to be making a cute little Star Wars R2-D2 apron. I um, took some inspiration from a number of different pictures that I've seen across the web and just made my own thing. All that you will need is some uh, little bit of blue fabric. This was the perfect fabric because it doesn't fray, which would be ideal because if you're doing the trim along the bottom, that is an awful lot of hemming you will have to do. I also bought a flat white bed sheet. The edges are already hemmed and you will have less hemming to do when you're actually sewing the project. So let's get started. Now what I've got here is my um, written out bunch of measurements. I decided I probably wanted 60 inches for the belt. I think that it should have maybe been longer, but um, the trim along the bottom would be about 150 inches and um, the belt, I was going to do blue, but I ended up actually using the portion of the sheet. The skirt is just a half circle and I wanted it to go 26 inches around the waist. You can make yours bigger or smaller and you'll have to do your math accordingly. So for the blue fabric, we're going to start by cutting a really, really long strip and I'm cutting it in half so that I have two really, really long strips and then I'm going to cut it in by 60 inches so that I have my piece for my belt. And then I'm also cutting on, along a curve for uh, the piece around the neck. Now this line here, I'm going to actually use as this edge of my circle so I won't have to hem it because it's already hemmed. Now this is my fold here so I need to um, line this up to make a circle cut. Now I find the way that I quite often do it is I just keep folding and folding into triangles and whatnot like this and I just keep going until I get a small enough triangle and then I just measure from there and I cut through lots and lots of fabric. So I got 24 and a half, make a mark there. Measure from this corner point again. And I just keep measuring from the corner point to 24 and a half and I'll just keep making little marks. And now I will just start making my cuts. There we go. And now what we want to do is make sure that this is eight and a quarter inches from here. I'm going to go from this point and I'm going to give it till um, eight and a quarter. And we'll do the same thing. I'm going to try cutting, I'm going to first cut it a little bit smaller. I will be seeing my lines because that's where I'm going to use my, for my seam inch seam allowance. And there we go. And then here, this is our circular skirt portion with these seams already done. For the apron, I'm cutting the top at 12 inches across and the bottom at 10 inches across on a fold. And I will be cutting two pieces so that I can sandwich everything in between and you won't have any hemming seam around the edge at all. Now I'm going to make use of the top of this sheet because it actually is, it's doubled up already. It's sewn, it's ironed. And it's pretty much the same width as the belt in blue that I wanted to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the top here. I'm just going to cut just under the seam. To I'm just going to end up sewing this piece on top of this after I've sewn my other parts on to make a nice clean um, edge. So it's a little can be a little fancier than I was initially planning for, but hey, why not? All right, so now you've got all your pieces, your belt, your circle skirt, your trim, your neck piece, and your two bib pieces, and we're gonna put them all together. First, we have to gather the entire bottom of the 
skirt area, that um, trim. So I just hand gathered it. And once it's gathered, lay it out across the bottom of your skirt um, like this. Try and fiddle with it and until it looks the way you like and then pin it into place before you start your sewing. Uh, it's a little fun sewing with all the pins in place, but you're going to need to keep the pins there, otherwise you're going to have a bit of a mess. Once it's sewn, you can pull out the gather thread. I like to make mine white so it's easy to see. Next, we'll be stitching together the back of the uh, neck pieces. And now to do this part, this is my right side here, this is my wrong side, so right side together, and we will take this and stick it inside here, and we're going to have to pin this around like this, I don't know if you can see that, so we're pinning this in here, so that it lines up that way. And then we're going to be sandwiching this with the right side. This is the right. This is the wrong side. This is the right side in, so that this is kind of inside out. And then we'll be stitching all the way around this edge and leaving the bottom open. This is what we get when we turn them inside right. Now we have our two belt pieces. We've got this the white piece, it's actually um, a double layered piece from the end of the uh, sheet. And we've got this blue piece, and I like the blue because of how it'll look. I'm going to layer the blue on top of the white, but first I need to find the midpoint of the white. So we'll just fold it in half to find the midpoint. And then we take and we find our midpoint of the uh, top portion, and we fold it there. And this is going to be sewn on directly onto this. This is the good side up on top. So I'm just going to layer this under like that to sew it. And then here with our skirt portion, we're going to do the same thing. And there's our midpoint. And we're going to put this in here and we're going to stitch it on. So I've got white thread in here now. I folded these in half and I ironed the fold so that this halfway point is easy for me to find on all of my pieces, this is a skirt piece. I have a nice um, crisp fold there. You can pin it into place. The best way for doing a longer one, if you really want to keep that center centered, is to start from the middle and then go that way and then to turn it around and then go from the middle that way. And then you have the whole thing. At least that's how I found it works best for me. I hate pinning. I absolutely hate pinning. I'm going to shortcut it. Best way is to pin it, but I hate pinning, so I'm not going to pin it. I'm going to be a rebel. I'm the sewing rebel. I will start stitching. And I'm just going to be very carefully aligning it all the way. Now I'm just turning the whole thing around and starting again from the middle and moving my way out. Now I've switched my thread back to black for this part because I don't have blue thread, so... And I'm going to make a seam. Now, I actually like the idea of having this blue belt on here. I tried on my, uh, my apron and I had to make a, an adjustment just on the um, neck piece, but with that adjustment it looks nice, so... Now, I cheat on this as well, and I just fold it, I don't iron. We've reached the part where our skirt is, so when sewing this, you got to make sure that your skirt is out flat here, because we actually have quite a bit of space, and then so This is the sewn apron, as you can see. This here didn't quite work out exactly like I was hoping, but it looks okay. I'm just thinking I might make a little blue bow to add right here just to clean it up a little bit. 
but otherwise I am very happy with how this turned out. Now I did have this all nicely ironed before but uh, it's been a couple days since I last recorded so it's gotten wrinkled since then but uh, we've got our handy dandy little R2 over here and he is going to be our model for today. And we are just going to, you could, you could actually make the apron look like R2 a few different ways. Um, one way is you could use some fabric puff paint like this or if you have acrylic paint and a fabric medium, it's kind of like this you could mix your own paint and paint it on or you can um, cut out some pieces of blue fabric and either glue them on with hot glue or uh, sew them on. I really love this fabric and the fact that it is a no fray because I didn't have to hem this at all. Okay, my glue is not working. This would actually be ideal. I've used it many times before and it works fairly well. Um, but since I can't get it to work, I'm just going to go with Elmer's. It says it's for good for fabrics. And so I'm just going to go with that and we'll just put some glue on and spread it with your finger. Now, the best bet is to actually spread all the way to the very edges of the fabric. You are going to get glue on your fingers, all over your fingers, if you're doing it this way. But quite frankly, I hate tacking and sewing on these little tiny strips. So I am doing it the gluing method. I may actually end up going over it later on with my black thread and just um, glue around or uh, sew around the edges. Um, but trying to pin all these things in place before sewing is virtually impossible. Believe me, I've tried it many times and I am not good at it. Maybe I'm just really bad at that sort of thing. Okay, that's not working either. Erg. And it's getting this weird coloration and that coloration will likely stay. I am sadly going to be busting my butt on this and sewing then. I don't know adhesive. <sighs> Stick pinning and I do not get along. So for certain areas I am just going to cut some adhesive and stick it in place. By stick pins, I hate you. Thing with the iron on adhesive though is I have found it does not stay for very long. So I just use it to stick things into place until I need to sew them. Okay, I am going to instead of using pins, I'm going to attempt to do this for here. I'm just gonna cut a small piece and then I'm going to, I don't know if you can even see that, I'm going to cut this into thirds widthwise. Make sure that the fabric is completely covering the tape. I have now got all my pieces, some parchment paper. I'm just gonna lie down straight on top of these pieces. Hottest setting is best, but I don't think that you want steam for this. I can't remember, I don't have my instructions anymore. Oh, look at that. On. One thing I'll note really quickly, I actually had to remove the tape a little bit on the ends and move them up because it's curved here so I had to curve these pieces slightly otherwise it looks a little bit funny but it will um, because this is actually kind of a bit of a stretchier fabric it'll work out fine in the end I decided to do a straight stitch around the edges of all the blue pieces you could do a zigzag takes a lot longer um, you could actually uh, just do a straight stitch and then put a bit of black puff paint over top if you want that same kind of a look. I'm just going to do a regular old straight stitch because that's what I did on my belt. I'm going to use a button for uh, the light. I just cut a circle, black circle out of felt and we will just be stitching the circle into place. Okay, I have a couple of buttons here I'm going to sew on. This is actually one of those little clippy snap things 
it's a little black button I have. And this one is blue, but it kind of looks gray. So I'm going to make a little bit of a three-dimensional piece here by sewing these two pieces here on the back side there. So. And that's four on the other part. Should be good. Now to make my knot. Once and twice. Oh well, thank you, sweetie. And this is the completed apron. I'm absolutely loving this apron. Oh, do we spin? 